Thailand's uh, strategy, Thailand's uh, success, it was really centered on multinational uh, um, companies in attracting, uh, they were able to attract uh, the major, the, the world's uh, major uh, automakers. So they, all, they were all there in, in, in Thailand. And at the same time, the uh, government and the private sector, they were also coordinating in, um, in uh, pushing for uh, a strategy, in pushing for policies that would further attract uh, locators and strengthen also the capabilities of their uh, domestic parts and suppliers. So, uh, yeah, that's why uh, I uh, also indicated in my presentation that given the nature of the industry, given that uh, its growth, its development, this is really being driven by multinationals. And given um, the lack of capital, lack of access to technology in, in, in our country, I guess uh, it's just but right for us to try to attract multinational cor corporations rather than doing it on our own. I mean, uh, we, we need not reinvent the, the wheel, as in the case of uh, Malaysia, which uh, shunned uh, foreign, foreigners uh, and tried to um, subsidize and uh, pursue its own national car plan. And as uh, we saw from the figures, it, uh, Thailand, uh, Malaysia didn't really um, succeed. And right now, it's really um, its major car maker that's Proton um, is really having a hard time. And uh, I mean, where did all those uh, huge subsidies that uh, the Malaysian government poured into the sector? It all went to nothing. Yes, please. Uh, if I may add to the points brought up in response to the same issue about Thailand. Uh, from the pure businessman point of view, my view is, and I was in the industry during that time, the main reason Thailand succeeded was they kept their CPU tariff at close to 100% while we went ahead and liberalized to 30. That forced all the brand principals to put and expand their factories in Thailand. And when the brand principals expanded their factories in Thailand, they brought in together all their parts and component support uh, industries, which brought, that was the period between 1989 to 1995. And of course, the reason all of the multinationals responded was because the domestic market was large. And why is the domestic market large? Because the agricultural sector was solid. In Thailand, the buyers of the pickup trucks are not the guys in Makati. They are the farmers because they have buying power. So somehow their economy, which is more balanced than ours uh, and more broad based, uh, had buying power at the, their, their middle class uh, went all the way down, which gave them buying power, which gave them, which gave them attraction to the brand, man, brand principles to move in, plus combined with a very strict tariff uh, structure uh, while we were liberalizing, they were maintaining uh, with formal as well as other games uh, they were playing, their tariffs high. So to respond to access that market, the brand principals put up their factories. Okay? And once that factory is there, as we know in manufacturing, once it's sunk cost, it just goes on and on. And that I think uh, I'd like to add to the comments about uh, why Thailand grew. Thank you. Okay, uh, just, to, just to highlight the fact that uh, in this exercise, it's really giving our own individual inputs on how to eventually arrive at the roadmap that the uh, government uh, has been, uh, has been uh, uh, looking forward to. And so that's part and parcel of trying to explain that uh, phenomenon. Uh, Frank? Thank you, Dr. Uh, the first part was already uh, answered by Mr. Mills. It's about tariff. While we went down to 30% some years back, until today, Thailand is still at 80%. Vietnam is still at 80%. Malaysia has went down to 30, the same as ours. But the difference between that time of 80% and 30%, they translated it into an excise taxation system for imported CPUs. 
So in effect, uh, we give the others opportunity to come in while we do not protect our own by way of tariff. Second, which uh, I would like to request uh, Dr. Aldaba to confirm and or rebut. I have yet to hear about the effect of used vehicle imports. Because in this country, anybody, any Tomtik and Hari can bring in vehicles and sell it in the open market. True, there are restrictions to some models, some variances, but there's no implementation of those rules. So it's a free game. In the case of our neighboring countries, importation of used vehicles is no no, except in the case of Vietnam, where they impose a hundred percent excise tax for all imported CBOs, which will make it uncompetitive. Your comments, please, Dr. Aldaba. Thank you. Uh, regarding the, the second point on uh, the impact of second-hand uh, vehicles, uh, well, as we all know, uh, the industry is, um, yeah, it requires a, la a, la a huge economies of scale, and uh, given, given our, sm our, our market is already relatively small compared to other uh, uh, ASEAN countries, and uh, Allowing uh, the second-hand uh, motor vehicles to come in would further uh, reduce the size of our domestic market, and uh, hence, uh, I think in other countries that's uh, one of the reasons why they try to ban the entry of uh, second-hand uh, vehicles, because precisely because they wanted to develop their industry, and in order to develop, they need a. Uh, reduce their cost and become uh, more competitive, they need a huge, a huge market, uh, market size. Because as, as your, as your uh, domestic market increases, your per unit cost would, would go down. And this will um, impact on your uh, competitiveness. OK. Just to make sure that things don't uh, slip by the wayside. On the issue of conversion with respect to taxes, I think that's one of those uh, points that uh, can be pursued uh, later on when uh, when uh, the, the work on the road plan uh, gets uh, underway. Uh, next, uh, yes, the gentleman in red. Good evening, Paul. I think you will introduce yourself. Uh, um, I'm the sole representative of labor right now. All right. Uh, the address uh, went home already. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd like to be enlightened uh, as to why the farmers in Thailand can afford brand new pickup trucks, wherein the farmers in the Philippines can only afford second-hand SUVs. Please enlighten us. Since I was the one who brought that up, I'll try to answer. Actually, I'm not sure I know also, but I think the, one of the reasons is Thailand is a very flat country. They don't have typhoons, so their productivity, the rice and uh, other fruit productivity core is very high, higher than us. Plus, I think they have, if I recall uh, what I read, uh, irrigated land of something like 9 million hectares while we have only 2 or 3 million. So, yes, their productivity is high, plus they have more uh, arable land, and somehow they, they, they don't have the typhoons that destroys